Hi everyone! Today we are learning about the taiga, a coniferous forest. We are learning about physical characteristics, biotic relationships, environmental impact, and an endangered species. So let's get started! Taiga is the Russian word for forest and it so happens to be the largest terrestrial biome in the world. The taiga biome is also known as the coniferous forest or boreal forest. It stretches over Eurasia and North America. The taiga is located near the top of the world, just below the tundra biome. That means that this biome is cold. The Köppen climate classification system designates taiga as a region of short summers and protracted very cold winters with high amplitude temperature with two extreme seasons. This biome typically has short wet summers and long, long cold winters. Winter lasts approximately six to seven months and temperature range from 30 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The average precipitation per year is about 30 to 40 inches, so precipitation is moderate in the taiga. It gets plenty of snow during the winter due to its duration and plenty of rainfall during the summer. The taiga climate is for the most part dominated by cold arctic air. Exceptionally cold winds bring bitterly cold air from the Arctic Circle. The temperatures fall even more on clear nights when there is no cloud cover. Because of Earth's tilt, the taiga is turned away from the sun in the winter. Less of the sun's radiation reaches the ground to warm it up. Taiga soil is geologically young and generally lacking in nutrients. In contrast, the deep, organically enriched soil profile present in temperate deciduous forests is absent in taiga zones. The thinness of the taiga soil is attributed chiefly to the cold climate, which impedes the development of soil and the facility with which plant life can extract soil nutrients. Zonation is the distribution of plants or animals into specific zones according to parameters like altitude or depth, each characterized by its dominant species. Since the taiga is the largest terrestrial biome and expands across different countries, there are definitely different zonations. For example, in the territory of North Korea, there are three vegetation zones with altitude no belts. There are several abiotic limiting factors in the taiga. One of them is water. Precipitation itself is not a limiting factor. However, due to the long winters being extremely cold, the trees cannot survive on frozen water. Since the weather in the taiga jumps from one extreme to the other, another limiting factor is fire. Forest fires spread at the beginning of summer because the plants and trees first see the sun after half a year of snow. Luckily, some plants, like the jack pine, are prepared for the occasional forest fire and bounce back. Finally, a limiting factor, which you might have noticed, is weather. With temperatures that range anywhere from negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, Throughout the whole year, plants must adapt to generally colder temperatures. Main producers are autotrophic organisms that synthesize organic materials from inorganic materials, which introduce new organic material into the environment that the primary consumers can feed upon and so forth. Some of these producers include berries, mosses, wild lily of the valley, and arboreal Lichens. One example of predator prey relationship in the taiga is between the snowshoe hare and the bobcat. In this situation, the snowshoe hare is the prey and the bobcat is the predator. 
The role that this predation has is that the bobcat is keeping the number of snowshoe hares reasonable. If this were to stop happening, the amount of snowshoe hares would drastically increase. Another example of predation in the taiga is the relationship between the caribou and the lynx. In this case, the caribou is the prey and the lynx is the predator. The reason for this predation is so that the lynx can survive. The lynx already has a smaller population than the caribou, so if this were to stop happening, more of the lynx population would decrease due to the malnourishment and the caribou population would increase. One last example of predation in the taiga is the relationship between a fish and the black bear. In this relationship, the fish is the prey and the black bear is the predator. The reason for this predation is so that the fish do not reach the carrying capacity in the rivers. If this predation stops occurring, the fish would reach carrying capacity and the black bear would have to travel farther and try harder to find and catch food. Occasionally, the brush in the taiga catches fire. The jack pine has developed waxy needles and thick, rough bark. It is often used as lumber for houses due to its naturally fire-resistant nature. When it is destroyed by fire, the seeds fall and germinate immediately or stay dormant until conditions are ideal. Once thought to be poisonous to the soil, many plant species actually grow with the jack pine. Similar to the jack pine, the black spruce has waxy needles and thick bark to protect it from natural interference. In addition to these characteristics, the black spruce is able to survive in the colder climates because of its layered twigs. This protects it from predators also. Its lack of a specific root system allows it to survive in nutrient-poor soil. Animals need to survive in the taiga. Their adaptions help them stay warm, hide, and defend themselves. In the harsh winter months, many animals have thick coats to keep them warm. For example, the Siberian tiger has a thick coat, long legs, and large paws. Its long legs help the tiger to walk through deep snow. Its large paws act like snowshoes. To escape the cold weather, some species of birds migrate to warmer areas during the winter months. The grizzly bear eats lots of food to gain fat that helps to keep it warm. Then it sleeps through the winter. It isn't actually hibernation, it is just a deep sleep. Some animals in the taiga have adaptions for defense. The porcupine has quills that it uses to keep predators at bay. If a predator tries to kill the porcupine anyway, it will get the quills stuck in its body. Some animals have adaptions that camouflage them. Animals like the snowshoe hare turn brown in the summer and turn white in the winter. There are industries in the taiga that pose threats to many animals in it. Logging happens across much of the taiga and has many impacts. It destroys habitats and cover for animals and also leads to soil erosion. It also, however, can create useful new open habitats for the animals to feed in. Oil and gas exploration happens as well across much of the taiga. This industry disrupts the living species in many ways. First, it cuts down the trees to make a well site, which destroys habitats. In the case of the oil sands, huge masses of land can be cleared and used for extraction and also for storage of toxic tailings. As we have seen in Alberta, these ponds can kill thousands of waterfowl that are native to the taiga. Another industry that threatens taiga species is hunting. The Siberian tiger, for example, is almost extinct due to poachers hunting for its incredible coat. Brown bears have seen a large decline due to hunting and so have many other large mammals like the wolf, cougar, 
caribou, moose, etc. There are many positive things that humans are doing to help the taiga. The Forest Stewardship Council is a logging organization that ensures that the forest it logs from are logged sustainably and safely for the people who live in the area and most certainly the animals. The Taiga Rescue Network is an organization of over 200 organizations and aboriginal groups that strive to help the Taiga. Their goal is to see sustainable logging throughout the Taiga and also the creation of more protected lands in the Taiga. The World Wildlife F Foundation is a huge global organization. It helps endangered species, but is especially concerned for the panda, the elephant, and the tiger. The Siberian tiger that lives in the taiga is on the brink of extinction, and this organization has a huge influence on its future. Siberian tigers are the world's largest cats. The tigers live primarily in eastern Russia's birch forest and also existing in China and North Korea. Large predators, Siberian tigers stalk their prey from thick vegetation. They are most active at night and typically feed on large hoofed mammals such as boar, deer, and elk, although they will eat other animals as well. The big cats are excellent climbers, swimmers, and leapers, adaptions they employ to pursue their meals. Long, retractile claws and muscular forearms let the animal grab and hold prey. A bite to the throat or back of the neck is used to kill. The Siberian tiger is considered a critically endangered species with the primary threats to its survival in the wild being poaching and habitat loss from intensive logging and development. It is estimated that in 1991 alone, one third of the Siberian tiger population was killed to meet the demand for their bones and other parts used in traditional Chinese medicine practices. Over the last hundred years, Hunting and forest destruction have reduced overall tiger populations from hundreds of thousands to perhaps three to five thousand. The estimated Siberian tiger population is only about four to five hundred tigers. The Lincoln Park Zoo participates in the Tiger Species Survival Plan, a shared conservation effort by zoos throughout the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Also, the World Wildlife Foundation has been a big influence in spreading awareness to the public about animals on the brink of extinction. Before, there were only an estimated 400 Siberian tigers. With these efforts, recent studies suggest that these numbers are stable. In 2012, the Kremlin had announced a new law stating that poaching, trade, transportation, and possession of endangered animals is to be made a criminal offense in Russia. The Russian CEO of the WWF proclaimed the law to be a significant step towards protection of tigers and other endangered species threatened by trade and poaching. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully you're an expert on the taiga forest just like me.